Praise the Lord and let the church say amen. God bless you on this beautiful, blessed Monday morning. Hope and pray everybody is doing well. I did part one saying there is nothing too hard for God. There is nothing too hard for God. And I want to just tie this in and make this part two because I received a beautiful email. And I won't reveal no name, but brother, let me say, let me say this. God can deliver you. God can take your misery and turn it into a ministry once again. I want to talk about growing up in the hard life. I know pretty much a lot of us are familiar with that. If you came out of the hood, the ghetto, the projects, throw your hands up. Because it's not about where you came from. It's about where you are going. You're not held responsible for where you came from, but you are held accountable for where you are going. And I stated in that video, it don't matter who you are. God can change you, brother. And I did an old video called A Thug Can Change, too, if you want to go back and look at that video, because I'm not here to knock you down and beat you down and, and try to put you in the hell. I'm here to encourage you and tell you there is a better way and that God can take that thug life away. Such a young age also, man. And, and, and you, what, what's, what's amazing is that a lot of people don't understand. If you can sit down and talk to some of the some of your favorite celebrities, they can tell you their lifestyle. They pretty much wasn't no better than you are. So a thug can change too. But the question is, how bad do you want to change? I always say we all have a past, bro. We all used to be something and some of us just plain don't want to change, but some do. You know, you know one one thing is that God is waiting on us to surrender. Let me say it like that. Because when you surrender and stop living that foolish lifestyle and say, God, work on me, I am a sinner. And I want to live better. I want to live for you. That's when your change comes. When you accept Christ as your personal, your personal savior. Some of your favorite singers, musicians, preachers used to be right where you at, brother. They used to be right where you at. Because I want to talk about this street thug. And a lot of people don't even know this. Some do. I want to say from thug to pastor. And if you know who I'm talking about, I'm talking about Pastor John P. Key. The way John P. Key used to live, brother. I don't know if you ever studied uh, anything about you love listening to that John P. Key. So let me use John P. Key in this video. And big shout out to Pastor John P. Key. One of my favorite all the gospel artists I love to listen to. And I, I remember when he used to talk about his thug life. He said, I ain't nothing but an old street thug who loved to smoke weed and, and do all kind of crazy things. A lot of people didn't know this about Pastor John P. Key. How he used to be out there on them streets, smoking all the weed he can. And, and, and people will say, this guy can't change. This is why we don't have no business telling, telling people who can and cannot change. And some people think that what they're going through, nobody has went through it before, but... As Solomon said, there is nothing new under the sun. But now he's from a thug to a pastor. Oh, man. See, that's most preachers that I know were pimps, brother, were gangsters. My uncle right now, he'll tell you, if you can sit down and talk with my uncle, Reverend Tommy Thompson, he was one of the, one of the worst gangsters. He, he'll tell you, he got his leg shot off right down the street from me, blowed his leg clean off. He used to live that lifestyle. He used to get drunk. Well, one day God took that bottle out of his hand and put a Bible in his hand. See, we all got something we dealing with, brother. This is why I, ho I hope that people will stop trying to tell people you got to get changed overnight. That don't happen like that. You ever wonder why you still here? Have you ever asked yourself, why am I still here? Why I wasn't dead when, when it took my homeboy out. Why I didn't get shot? Why I didn't die? Why am I still here? Apparently God sees something in you. And if you're not careful, and if you don't change what you're doing, you probably will be the one that go next. God is waiting on us. 
I ask myself all the time, why why I didn't get shot from out here? Why is it so many of my homeboys die? Why is it the bullets that come through my mom and them house growing up and hit me? Why this? Why that? I am still here. Why is it I'm not strong out on dope? Why is it I'm not out there thugging and, and gang banging and hanging with the wrong crowd? Well, I made a dramatic change in my life. Because God take the worst people and get the glory out of them. He, he sees the good when mankind don't. See, man judges by the outer appearance and, and your actions and all of that stuff. But God looks at your heart. And God has something for all of us to do. And it's best that when God has something for us to do, that we do it. We have to do it. Why am I not locked up? And it's innocent people that was locked up. Why am I still here? So John P. Key, when he talks about his thug life, he say I ain't nothing but a street thug. But now he say I'm a church thug because I'm thugging for Christ. In my old video, I talked about a movie Vin Rames did, and, and, and he... He was reaching out to this youngster that was changing his life around, just like you. And it was it was it was to the point where the youngster was just he surrendered. And Vin Reigns was a preacher in this movie, and he reached out to this young man, moved him in his house, did so many things. But from the young man's past, I think he owed some dude some money. And they beat him up. And they hit him so hard with this with this piece of something in his hand that it they hit him in the head and they killed him right when he was in the midst of his change. See, some of us try to change when it's too late. And what, what goes around comes around. I'm not trying to scare you no kind of way in this video, but to just tell you the truth about God and how God can deliver you. I don't care if you're a thug. I don't, I, I, see, I, I'm not like religious folks that don't want to talk to you because you, you got on a certain pair of pants and your hair is a certain way or you got tattoos all over your body. I look past all that. Pastor John P. Key turned his life around, and man, we all know how big he is in the gospel, and, and he has a gifted voice out of this world. And just like the Bible, it shows us the good side of people and they bad side. Do you think King David was all that perfect? You say you know about David. Let's use David for an example. David wasn't perfect. But David still was a man after God's own heart, in spite of when he failed at times. Still a man after God's heart. Paul wasn't perfect. Look at him when he was Saul. Moses wasn't perfect. But I, Jesus, was. And I'm so glad that the Lord looks at the heart. He looks at the heart. Oh, God Almighty. Right there, is just, it makes me want to pause and just say, Thank you, Lord, for looking at my heart. Because if... If he didn't look at the heart and he would judge us like mankind, would none of us make it to heaven? None of us. None of us would make it to heaven. So with that being said, man, and, and I just want to just reach out to you for a moment because I love when I see comments like this because when you go to church, they turn you away. I tell anybody on this page, the ones that's been turned away from the church, them the ones I want the most. I tell you somebody else at your same age, bro. That's why I said I won't reveal your name. One person that you think wasn't offering all that stuff. Barry White. Big Barry White. Oh, yes, with the love songs. If you know anything about how Barry White used to be coming up, you'll be like, wow. See, this is why everybody couldn't be a pastor. Somebody had to sing. Look at Bernard Hopkins, his lifestyle. His street lifestyle. So what did Bernard Hawkins do? He turned into a boxer. Started making money that way. Even though religious folks don't agree with that. Some of this stuff, I, I just wish that these religious folks would stop bashing on people about. Because if they wasn't doing football or basketball or singing, would you rather them be doing sports or whatever it is that they do? Or would you rather them get killed on the streets? That's why I say everybody couldn't be a pastor. Everybody wasn't wasn't going to be a gospel singer or an evangelist. Or somebody had to be a comedian. Somebody had to be a doctor. Somebody had to be a lawyer. Somebody had to do something different than what the next man or next woman did. Everybody wasn't no prophet. Now it looks like a lot of people want to be a prophet nowadays. Everybody wasn't called to be a, a, a bishop. People giving themselves titles and saying God called them. I'm, I'm real cautious with that. 
So with that being said, man, I hope I said something that can, you know, you know, reach you in this video because I always like to look at Pastor John P. Key and listen at him when he tells his life story, how he was, how he used to be, and how you're not really all that far from where you was at if somebody pissed you off the wrong way. So with that being said, love you, brother. It don't matter that you can change from that thug life. That's why, let me say this again, when I look at that movie with Ian Rames, he told a young guy, you can still be a thug, but be a thug for God. He said, but just change what thug means, T-H-U-G. He said that thug means true hero under God. So you can be a true hero under God. God bless you and God keep you. Peace.